So, as you can probably tell, this algorithm looks kind of cursed, and why is that exactly? Well, if you have eyes, you can tell that this algorithm has a base of negative 1 and has an argument of 2i. Both things are not exactly very nice to look at and probably even work with, but I'm going to prove you guys wrong. Let me show you. So if we let x be equal to this logarithm at the top here, so x equals log base negative 1 of 2i, if we both, if we put both sides to the base of negative 1, then we're going to see that this log of negative 1 cancels out with that negative 1. So then we are going to get negative 1 power of x equals 2i. And now what we can do is we, is we can ln both sides. Maybe put that in a different color, just so it doesn't hurt your eyes. So ln, put that to both sides. So we bring the x to the front here. So that we are going to then get x times ln of negative 1 equals ln of 2i. And then we can divide both sides by ln of negative 1. So that comes out with that. So we're going to get x equals ln of 2i all over ln of negative 1. What can we do here with this 2i and negative 1? Well, what I'm thinking is that we convert both into polar form so that the e's and the l's can cancel out. But now, let me just quickly recap you guys on what this polar form is going to look like. So if we have a complex number z, then in polar form, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a magnitude of a, and it's going to be e to the power of i theta, where theta is going to be its argument in the complex plane. So in this case, if we look at 2i and negative 1, right, let's draw a complex plane here. I'll draw it here, so it doesn't block my face. So we're going to have the imaginary axis, we're going to have the real axis. Negative 1 is going to be here, and i is going to be at the top here. Now for both, it's going to have an a value of 1, because distance of negative 1 from the origin here is going to be 1. Same thing with i to the origin, it's also going to be a magnitude of 1. But now the argument is going to be different, the theta is going to be different. For negative 1, it's going to have an argument of pi from that positive real axis there. And then from the real axis here to i, it's going to have an argument of pi on 2. So now, this therefore means that negative 1 can be rewritten in the form e to the i pi, and i can also be rewritten as e to the i pi on 2. So if we put this into our original x, or equation, whatever, we're going to get x equals, so ln, that was 2i at the top, it's going to, actually, I could even put the 2i in there, but whatever. It's just going to be 2. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, uh, there we go. So 2, and then times e to the i pi on 2. You're going to have ln of, uh, what was it, negative 1, that's going to be e to the i pi. You're going to see that this e and that ln will cancel out, but then the property of logs, right? If we take these two things out, separate them into two separate logar logarithms, then this is just going to be equal to i pi, and then ln of 2, and then the e and that ln will cancel out, so then we're going to have plus pi on 2i, and then if we multiply top and bottom by 2, that, that cancel out, so we're going to x is going to be equal to 2i pi, then 2 ln of 2. We can bring the 2 inside the logarithm, but let's not do that. So then plus pi i. Let's just leave i in the denominator. So then this is going to be our answer. Just a fat complex number. As you guys could have probably guessed. But in the end, it's not too bad. As long as you know your polar form. In, well, if you want to convert a complex number in Cartesian form to polar form. But anyways, I'm waffling. You can do it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you have a good day. Keep learning maths. Study maths. See you guys in the next one. Bye for now.